Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com, and today we're going to talk about PCOS, Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. This is a common metabolic and period-related disorder in young women primarily, and it's very prevalent and is associated with Obviously, as the name says, polycystic ovary. So women present with ovarian cysts or ruptured ovarian cysts that would be a tip-off to start a workup for PCOS. More commonly, before we have a diagnosis of ovarian cysts, we have other issues. Women will come in and complain about irregular periods. So they, they miss their periods. They spaced out their periods. They never really had regular periods. This is suspicious for PCOS. Um, acne, hirsutism, which is hair growth, so either thick facial hair or arm hair or a stripe of hair up the belly. Uh, these are often things women will complain of, and this is, can be a, the start of a workup of PCOS as well. Um, metabolic syndrome, so obesity, diabetes, elevated blood sugars, high cholesterol and triglycerides in a young woman will oftentimes trigger questions about their menstrual cycle or exam looking for evidence of hair growth, and that's associated with PCOS as well. But the primary condition of PCOS is polycystic ovary. So your ovary is a big olive-shaped gland and you have two of them in the bottom of the pelvis and every month you go through ovulation so after your period hormones FSH and LH primarily rise from the pituitary gland they signal your ovary to try and make an egg what happens with the ovary is that you get multiple what are called follicles and these are little water bubbles on the ovary and they're all racing towards ovulation and looking for one what's called predominant follicle. So all these multiple little bubbles on the ovary, one of them grows faster than the rest of them, becomes the predominant follicle and has a little egg in the middle of it and at ovulation the thing ruptures like a volcano and pops and the egg floats out and down the eustachian tube. This is ovulation. With ovulation, this predominant follicle collapses upon itself and becomes what's called the corpus luteum. And that's important that after ovulation, this corpus luteum forms because that causes progesterone release, estradiol release, and hormones that inhibit FSH and LH from the pituitary gland, and that causes all of these other follicles to shrink up, and then at the end of the cycle, you don't have any follicles or bubbles left on your ovaries, and you do it again. When we don't have this predominant follicle um, forming, we don't have progesterone forming, we don't have suppression of the other follicles, and we're left with multiple follicles on the ovary, and that's called polycystic or multiple cysts on the ovary. They don't collapse, they don't shrink up, and over weeks or months you get multiple, sometimes 10 or 20 uh, follicles that form on the ovary. Sometimes each month it gets a little bit bigger, it doesn't rupture, and then you have a painful ovarian cyst and end up in the emergency room with pain or a ruptured ovarian cyst. So this is the primary problem with PCOS. When we don't have a regular period like that, we don't have progesterone, we don't cycle normally. So if you come in and say, I have a period every 28 days, I can pretty much guarantee you don't have PCOS because you have to have a predominant follicle that ruptures and creates a corpus luteum and releases progesterone in order to have that regular menstrual cycle. So if you have a regular cycle, you don't have PCOS. So the diagnosis of PCOS is generally clinically made with someone with irregular periods, acne, hair growth, um, maybe metabolic syndrome, that's likely PCOS. But from specific diagnostic purposes, uh, ultrasound of the ovaries is the primary diagnostic tool. And we're looking for 10 to 20 follicles on your ultrasound on both ovaries to confirm polycystic ovary syndrome. Because of the metabolic issues, acne and hirsutism, these are androgen or male hormone related. We do blood work and we look for testosterone levels, primarily free testosterone. This should be elevated in PCOS. Another male hormone called androstenedione dione is elevated in PCOS or maybe. And then almost always DHEA. S is elevated in uh, PCOS as well. So these are some hormonal blood tests that we can do um, to de determine if you have PCOS. 
Um, metabolic syndrome, we've talked about that as a separate topic, but metabolic syndrome in an older obese person is the same issue in somebody with PCOS. They have elevated insulin levels and insulin resistance. They have elevated blood sugars, oftentimes fasting. They may they may flunk a two-hour glucose tolerance test. They tend to be obese. They have high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol. All the same things that we look for in a older person and diagnose them as metabolic syndrome. Uh, we also look for in a younger person as a part of a complex of PCOS. Uh, we don't know what causes PCOS, but we think it is hereditary primarily. Uh, we have multiple treatments for PCOS, and they're related to the metabolic abnormalities. And I'm going to do that on a separate video, but PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, a constellation of ovarian cysts, also associated with irregular periods, male pattern hair growth, male pattern hair loss, acne, metabolic, uh, androgen metabolic issues, and... Uh, metabolic syndrome, um, weight gain, obesity, uh, insulin resistance, high blood sugar, and cholesterol abnormalities. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.